We left off page 80. He had said that a person is gifted with various abilities and he focuses on them and he values himself because he possesses them, the person is entering into a danger zone. Because the moment you start reflecting on yourself that you're gifted and you're different than others, then you feel, you know, there's an expression, you know, man's gift to humanity. That's what you start feeling. And this touches upon the what? The gaiva. You know, the Rambam, famous Rambam, the Rambam says that that the derech ha is the shvil azov. In to a person's midos, your behavior, you should always be at the equidistant point from both extremes. However, when it comes to humility, havi mo'od mo'od shval ruchet says in You have to go to the extreme. So the, so the Rambam writes in his commentary, even though normally we say extreme is negative, because when it comes to ego, unless you continuously push in to the extreme of humility, you ultimately you can become a you can become an arrogant, pompous, prideful person. So you always have to address that, address, always check on that ego. So it's mode mode habishvul. You have to have that lowly spirit to remain humble. Otherwise, you don't remain humble. Okay. So he's explaining. He says, if a person starts focusing that he possesses many qualities or abilities, he's immediately in danger of falling into the pit of pride. No, a little pride doesn't hurt anyone. Never hurt anybody. See, it's, it's not simple, you know, when you have, when you ra- when you, that's, that's, that's what I'm pointing out. When you raise children, a child has, you know, many people, what do they suffer from? Self-esteem. It's a major problem. Okay? See, but there's a way to point it out. It's not you tell your child, you're better than the next one. You could say you're special because A, B, A through Z, that's a fine. But you say, you know, you're better than, than, than Jim or Jack or, or Chaim, whatever it is. That's a problem. Because then you're using his, his quality or his ability that he's superior to someone else. The moment you speak about superiority, it becomes a problem. Then already you're feeding, you, you're already leading them in a direction which, which is not a good direction. Again, even this, this, once you have the self-esteem, you, afterwards you don't, you don't have to focus on it anymore when you become an adult. As a child, definitely you have to build the self-esteem of a child to tell him that he's capable, he's, and you know, he, he, he'll have confidence, he'll be able to go. go. But, and when he gets older, he'll, he'll understand not to focus on that, because he focuses on that as an adult, or as a teen, then he'll feel he's superior. But to, to bring up a child saying, you're superior, you're better than him, you know, somebody insults your son, don't listen, you're, be- you're better than he is. Right? Sometimes you have to say it, otherwise the child can be hurt. You know? But it's, it's not a good thing to do, because then you're ready, you're, you're, you're mentoring him, conditioning him to think in, in, that, in that direction. Once a person has already implanted in his heart, said in his heart, that because he's someone who's unique and he's worthy of praise, he's deserving of praise. Some people, you know, a person comes to shul, he expects to get shlishi or shishi, nothing less. That's his level of, of expectation. Why? Because for whatever reason. But that's, he has that in his mind. And if they don't give him, or even worse, they don't give him an aliyah. You, you could imagine, or they call him for glila. You know what I mean? This man, he's going to be seething. Or even livid. Right? He may, he may have to drink out a bottle of scotch just to calm him afterwards. When he goes out for the kiddish club. story, you know, um, in, in Baltimore years ago, we had a very special mashkiach. His name was Rav David Kronglis. He was the closest, he was the Talmud Muvak of Rav Chatzka Levenstein, who was the mashkiach, Mir Mashkiach, and Rav Yeruchim before. And 
it came to a point where the Gabbai would go over to, to a, to a Vachsik, would you please go for Psicha? They said, of course, somebody, you could ask somebody else to go for Psicha. That's what they would tell the Gabbai. Couldn't get anybody to go for Psicha. So he went and complained to the Mashgiach. So the Mashgiach went and called me and a few of my friends in, which we were like the upper echelon of students in the yeshiva, and said, from now on, the only people who could get Psicha, only the best Bachram in the yeshiva. And it became status to get to get psicha. And that, that's what that's uh, that would change the whole perception. So he said that in Kelm, that's where they mentored people to be special people to take to empty the trash can, the waste bin, that was a covet. Not everybody could could empty it. They had to be of special that person would empty it. You know, you take the, the trash out of the base measure, you had a, a small trash can in the corner. To empty that Unless you were of, 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 of the up, better uh, quality student, you couldn't empty it. It was a famous story. This is a story of Gifter. Gifter, Rocha. There was uh, this person gets married, and his wife asks him, "Could he take out the trash before Shabbos Friday?" So uh, he says, uh, "You know, it's, he says I'm a Talmud Chacham." He says to his wife, "Newlyweds." It's not covered at Torah. It's not. It's not really the wrong thing. You know, them doing the wrong thing. You, you should take out the trash. Okay? She says, I, I can't believe it. I can't understand. So he said, let's let's discuss. Let's just present before a gifter. Okay? So okay, he doesn't respond. The next week, Friday, the bell rings at Shabbos. <laughs> Rav Gifter says, I came to. He's a, uh, he was a reshiva. He says, I came to take the trash out for you. <laughs> After that, he understood, you know, what it means to have how to respect a wife. It's beneath your dignity to take out the trash from your own home. Okay. No, the Galila that the Gemara is, is by, by the Svardim, the people, or by the, the way the, uh, the Lubavitch do it, they go Hagba, and they put it down on the, uh, the Bima, and then they roll it closed. Right, so the one who lifts it, he actually is close in the Sefer Torah. Also, it's not a, another person. That that was the way it was, or the Sfardim. You know, they hold it and they just close the box. They lift it, they close the box. There's not a third party coming into the picture who closes the box. Right, right. Like the, uh, I think the Stipler said it. it says that. Um, of Christ with you. also Sandok at a bris is a very special honor mm. of course it's it's based on because it's based on uh, Rehain of Peretz who says cites some kind of Chazal that it's equivalent of the Ketoris of the incense offering and it says whoever had an incense offering became wealthy therefore when they had the the pious they would like the equivalent of the lottery anybody who had the incense offering for was not part of the group to be chosen for it, because he had to give somebody else a chance to become wealthy among the Kohanim. So it has ramifications. So based on that, the person who had, had uh, Sandakos in a certain family, they would not give it to him again. For that re same reason, because you had a chance, give somebody else a chance to become wealthy. So, okay, so there's a chasam so far, of course, they say, well, do you ever see a rabbi wealthy? Right, right? whatever. So, um, so some say, at one time, the Chidon Chassamsov was a moil. The Chassamsov himself was a moil. He would have the Sandakos and he would do the Milo. As the child was on his lap, he would do the Milo. So he was the Sandak and the moil. So many hold that, that it only brings Ashiros wealth only if you can do both. That when it's on the person's lap, he circumcised the child. But just to have it on the, the lap and the third party, party circumcised, it doesn't have that effect mm. to be continued. It wasn't poor. Rav Chaim Knevsky is a Sandik every single day, at least once. Rav Steinman is a Sandik at least once, every single day. Really? Every day. People bring their child. He doesn't have to go to a bris. 
they'll bring the child to his house, they'll have the bris in his house. They never say and, they, and, and they do the suda somewhere else. A mole never says tafim, right? It's, it's, a, it's a holiday. It's like if you have a bris in the shul, nobody says tafim. You know, the, by the Hasidim, if it's a yard site, they don't say Tachman. So the, I had a, somebody who came to, he, learned, he studied in Skok, he came from Milwaukee. So he learned in uh, the Tversky's are in Milwaukee. He's called the Hannah Stipel Rebbe. He was the father, he was the brother of the Bubba of a Rebbe. The of a Rebbe. So in the Shtibel, they, he never saw Tachman. Goes to Skokie. So he sees everybody comes, everybody's falling on their faces. He thought there was some kind of tragedy. Mm. <laughs> Never saw it before in his life. <laughs> okay. What about Mincha? Mincha, 